So Vince is very upset. He is with Austin Theory and Pat's in the ring and he starts gesturing towards Vince McMahon. And Vince McMahon is eyeing him and he starts taking his jacket off and the crowd is getting excited here. He takes off his dress shirt and there is the Vince McMahon G unit special. He's got the, the black tank top and he gets into the ring. The crowd is just going nuts here and a referee enters. And they're teasing a match here when Austin Theory attacks Vince, uh, attacks Pat McAfee from behind, and then the bell rings. So we get Pat McAfee versus Vince McMahon after all, and Vince McMahon is just attacking Pat. I just want to say, like you, you know, you 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 had reported this way back, and they could have simply announced it from that point on. Hey, like after the interview, we're doing Vince McMahon versus Pat McAfee. They chose to hold back on it much in the same way that they chose to hold back, you know, Owens versus Austin and the, probably the entire time thinking that they were going to do it anyway. So, again, it does have the similar effect of like, hey, you're under delivering and you're sorry, you're under promising and you're over delivering. Um, but I think it also shows some restraint because they could have very just, you know, very, like they could have they would have sold more tickets if it was Vince versus Pat McAfee that was advertised on their marquee. Uh, and they chose. But there's no do that. doubt that like, promoting that would have had like that that kind of shock factor attached to it of what is this going to be if Vince McMahon w- was attached to it. And, um, and, and also like there was like that period as well after, after that interview, like there was no Vince on TV, there was no interaction of that. And then they started to weave him back in with, with the locker room shots and stuff like that. So I I'm sure like, we'll hear a bit more about kind of wh- where the, this weaved from, but like the original idea was Pat McAfee and Vince McMahon, but Austin theory would be heavily involved um, because as we saw here, you can't do a match with Pat McAfee and Vince McMahon. So no. it, this was Pat who just had to sell and sell and sell. And theory then gets involved a second time where he pulls Pat and wraps his, his legs around the post uh, low blowing him and, Pat McAfee is just like, this is crippling to McAfee. I mean, uh, I mean, it makes sense because he had just wrestled such a big match, right? I, it does not make sense. Okay. Like, but I can at least believe in it a little bit more. Oh, uh, so Vince <laughs> gets a Cowboys football and he pretends he's going to punt it into the crowd, but he doesn't. Instead, he kicks it into Pat's midsection and pins Pat McAfee in three minutes and 46 seconds. Vince McMahon gets his first victory at WrestleMania. He is now one in four. <laughs> one in four. Is that right? Wow. Uh, well, there you go. This, this was, if you want to, they rang a bell. So if you are going to say match. Steve it's on Austin, his cage match. exactly. That's it. It's on his cage match. That punk brawl he had in 2012, never made it. It wasn't a match. So if you're going to qualify that Steve Austin had a match on Saturday, you have to acknowledge this was a match on Sunday. Yeah. And, this was awful. <laughs> oh, it was fucking god awful. Yeah, of course. But it was Vince McMahon wrestling in 2022. And so many of the same feelings I had the night prior seeing Stone Cold Steve Austin standing across from an opponent with the referee in between them and the bell ringing, I had for this moment because I was not going into tonight expecting Vince McMahon to face Pat McAfee in a, in a match. They gave us the moment and I was not expecting anything of it, but it was the moment that I was happy I got to witness. So I, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun. It was, uh, it was something. It was certainly something. And all of this really was just to set up the next thing. This was all for what was to come. Austin Theory is celebrating and posing with Vince. They hug the favorite part. There were a lot of favorites in this. Austin Theory's music plays and go back and watch. Vince is all shook. Because he's expecting a different theme to play, and they play Austin Theories, and Vince is all oh, oh, oh. A, a different Austin's. Oh, theme. it was yeah. yes, he heard the wrong Austin's theme, and then the glass breaks, and out comes Steve Austin. It was uh, I heard from people there this this was the loudest reaction of the entire night. It was mm-hmm. Steve Austin coming out. He stuns Theory, who took one of the best stunners, and then he stands in front of Vince. Vince is begging off. Austin passes him a beer and they go to have a beer together. Vince is sipping from the beer. He cheers him. And then Austin proceeds to try 
and stunned Vince McMahon. And Vince McMahon, historically, has taken some god-awful stunners. Nothing Mm. will ever approach how awful this one was. This man literally was physically stunned. Um, just at the, just at the, the boot from, from Steve Austin and Austin, dude, he was like, I am going to give this guy a stunner. And he's like trying to get his head back in position. He finally does it. He's just laughing at just, uh, you know, not since Donald Trump have we seen a worse WrestleMania stunner. Um, but th- this, this might have taken the cake of the worst stunner of all time. And maybe that's what will make this such a memorable segment. It actually was better that he took this stunner than a great one. You're right. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I, I'm not grading, you know, like how, how, how excellent of a stunner Vince took. Like to me, it was just like the moment of seeing them try this at their advanced ages and having it go horribly wrong and s- visibly seeing a stone cold Steve Austin laughing it off as of saying the last stunner I give at WrestleMania to you and the last res- stunner that Vince McMahon will ever take is by far the worst one he's probably given to anybody. It was a memory and it was a moment and I was grateful that it ha- happened because, again, it added to the fun and ridiculousness of it all. And they never rang a bell for Austin and McMahon. So that was not a Well, match. you got to build up to that, John. We got a whole so, year to go. Pat McAfee returns and he drinks a beer with Austin. I thought this was like a cool, cool moment here with, with McAfee and Austin. And then Austin stuns McAfee and we get this awesome shot of Pat dead on the floor drinking the beer and... That's how it ends with Austin just having this is like a lengthy, lengthy presentation. So I want to ask you, Way, from the high of Pat's performance against Austin Theory to like the low of Vince and Pat McAfee with Vince pinning Pat McAfee to the worst stunner in history to uh, uh, Pat McAfee drinking beer with Steve Austin. Uh, when you're assessing this, was this a net positive overall presentation? Yes, 100 was- percent. Yes. You know, so much of, again, so much of what goes into my feelings of what makes a WrestleMania special is the element of surprise. And for a lot of people, the element of surprise was to see Pat McAfee do so well in the match against Austin Theory. So you already have great points there. But seeing, for again, the nostalgic fan in, and, 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 you know, based off of all, off the, all, all the rumors to finally have confirmation <laughs> and to see Vince McMahon take his shirt off and enter the ring for an actual match. That was another element of nostalgia and surprise that very much elevated the segment to the next level. It was the most. And then to see Steve Austin reunited with Vince McMahon in the ring. And yes, it was one of the worst stunners of all time. But again, I don't really care. It's simply the fact that we got to see Vince McMahon take a stunner from Steve Austin and we can laugh about how horrible it was afterwards but we got to see it overall um it made this to me like one the most memorable thing by far and the most surprising thing positively and the most entertaining thing of night two the crowd loved this like this this was like they they were t- super into this and it wasn't just Austin like they were totally into the Pat McAfee throughout the whole thing mm-hmm. so you know I, I think honestly like it was you know you know for Pat McAfee it was uh probably a uh you know this this was his Kevin Owens moment tonight Oh, hundred percent. Yes, was being part of this. So this this was just a wild segment. It was just uh, th- this w- this had the most like spring break factor to me. It was like watching some of this because it was just you're watching this and here's a uh, seventy six year old Vince McMahon being Vince McMahon on WrestleMania. Ridiculous. Is this the last time we've seen Vince in in a ring? I mean, God, taking, taking physical abuse. You would think so. I mean, this this was what when you throw out like this was he has not had an actual wrestling match since. The Brett match mm. until this. Yeah. It was like, like you would, you would think, you would think that this would be it, but I mean, you, you can never guarantee, I guess. For sure. I mean, even to like get, I um, mean, he, he really cannot do anything. Like no, he cannot you, do anything physical. So I mean, match, y- you can barely call this a match. No. Even to get cleared for this, I wonder like what, what kind of hurdles he had to, you know, I mean, through. thankfully, like he didn't take anything. You know what yeah. I mean? It was not that many years ago. He took that headbutt from Kevin Owens. Remember, well, it, was skull not that many skull? Year, it was not that many years ago that he dove off the balcony. And that was two years ago. Center. You're right. Yeah. He did the, the dive off the balcony. So, I mean, yeah, by by that measure, like this was a pretty, pretty conservative uh, offensive outlet. 